narcissistic people might use your children in a triangulating way as flying monkeys to get information about you to uh, basically control the child. So let's talk about that today. My name is Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand, recover from, and transform your life after narcissistic relationships and after you've been with narcissistic people or you were raised by narcissists. Okay, I'll just give some examples here. So say that you are parallel parenting with a narcissist and, or, and they are using the children to get information back to them about you. And in this process, I mean, this is how it works, right? In the process, the children are in the middle. They're being used like a pawn to gather information and bring it back to the narcissistic person that they will then use. And you'd say, why would someone do that? Why would a person, I mean, you know how it is when you got your ex and the kids are over there, all you're thinking about really is like, are they safe? Are they fed? Are they happy? And hopefully if it's with a not toxic person, you're not even thinking about those things. You're just like, oh, I miss them. Okay. And you're going about your day, right? Why would someone need to gather information about you and use the children to get that information, what are they doing? Well, a narcissist is doing it to keep control of you. They're doing it to keep control of the situation and they're controlling you through having control of the children. They're using it to alienate, right? They're keeping things so that they're the ones who uh, can pull the strings in every situation. So somebody asked this question in the chat on one of the live streams. So the problem here is that when you have an adult child, you have an adult who has opinions as an adult and relationships as an adult that you have no way of even really knowing what the dynamic is because they're adults, right? They're living their own life with that narcissistic parent, okay? And with you. And so instead of keeping it separate and just being like, now I'm having time some time and hanging out with mom. Oh, look, now I'm hanging out with dad. They are being used as a connector back to you from that toxic person. And they're an adult. And so your influence over them, your ability to sort of um, parent it is kind of really difficult. They are anything you say will look like you're attacking the other parent because what they believe as their grown up adult self is that that other parent is fine, right? They haven't seen the truth yet. If they're allowing this triangulation to take place, if they haven't caught onto it and been like, Oh, wait a minute, why am I talking to dad about mom? Why am I talking to mom about dad? Right? Like they haven't figured it out yet. And the thing is that the children are getting attention. These adult children and children, children are getting attention from the narcissistic person through the triangulation. And they're showing loyalty to the narcissistic person through the telling of the information. And it can be information that seems innocent. So like, it's not like they're bad mouthing you. Well, sometimes they are, but usually it's just information and it's not information that you want the narcissist to have because you don't want them to have any information about you anymore because it's not their business. They don't understand it's wrong. They don't often know what's going on. They are not ready to see the truth of that parent yet. They haven't experienced, they could be a golden child and they haven't experienced the backlash yet. Or they're a people pleasing child and they have um, not learned the skills to stop the codependent behavior toward the narcissistic parent. So I have made videos about loyalty binds. This is one area where loyalty binds come into play. So usually when you hear about loyalty binds, you're, you're hearing um, stories of step parent situations where there's a divorce and then there's a, it's a loyalty to the birth parent, family, mother versus the step. You'll hear about it a lot in that kind of community. But I was reading something about it and I thought that is exactly what narcissists do. And so I started researching it more and more. And I'm like, wait a minute. No, no, no. It is not just in certain situations. This is exactly what narcissists do. They create loyalties through guilt, through shame, through uh, money, 
through fear, through don't want to hurt the narcissistic parent's feelings, right? So guilt and shame. And they create these emotional binds of loyalty that aren't real loyalty, healthy loyalty, where you have a loving family and you feel a sense of loyalty to your family because everything is loving and you're all helping one another and there's shared experiences and when one's down, we lift them up. It's not that, okay? It is forced loyalty. It's a bind, okay? And when your child has been raised with these loyalty binds and they're now an adult, they still exist. They're not only trauma bonded to that toxic parent, they have a loyalty bind. It's um, That's why a lot of you who are raised by toxic parents feel that shame when, like you could have a terrible narcissistic father who is physically violent, who is just aggressive and horrible to you. And you have a loyalty bind because I took care of you all your life. I paid all your bills. I did this for you. I did that for you. And you owe it. And da da da, right? You may feel shame. You may feel guilt when that aging elderly narcissistic father has needs and you're like, I, he was vile to me. I don't even want to say hello. And you feel the shame and guilt and you're like, why do I feel this? That's more than trauma bonding, you guys. That is the loyalty bind in play. And so if that's where your kids are at and that's what they're feeling, what the heck are you supposed to do? Limit your information to only stuff you're ready to have get back to the narcissist like you would with anyone you suspect that is a flying monkey. It doesn't need to damage your relationship. Your child does not need to know the comings and goings and intimate details of your life to have a good relationship, at least not right now while you're working through this piece. You can keep it to interesting topics about what they enjoy. You can keep it to benign things like who cares if your ex-narcissist knows you like flying kites? Who cares? right? Like it's not going to hurt anything. So who cares? So give them that information. It's really about, and yes, that means you can't share a lot of the things about what's going on with your feelings, what's going on in your personal life. It has to be okay for a little while, I think, in order to see where, basically you want to feed the information over that is okay through the child without having that Ch adult child need to edit themselves. You have to be the one to do it because it's your information that you're protecting. And it's not because they don't often, it's not because they don't also like you or love you. It's because they have been groomed and taught that this is how you interact. Another thing is when that adult child starts speaking about the narcissistic parent, stop the conversation and say, you know what I've been thinking? I feel like this might be gossip. I don't like to gossip about your dad, your mom, whatever. So unless it's something that like, I want you to be able to talk to me if something's up and you're hurt and you need to talk, that's fine. But just this day-to-day -day stuff or these little details about who they're dating or where they're going, I think maybe that's best between you two while you guys are talking. And so it's like a gentle way, like you'd talk to any adult, right? Like not making them a child and saying, don't do this with your father, or your mother, but allowing them to be an individual who has a mind and is making choice for their life and show them how you would rather interact about the other parent. And hopefully doing that will help if you're pushing against it and you're creating a, this hurts my feelings, blah, 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 but whatever it is, that friction is part of what the narcissist is feeding off of, knowing they're creating that fr that friction. And it gets back to the toxic person. Oh my gosh, mom is always blah, blah, blah. Dad can't handle it, blah, 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 right? And it's that um, narcissistic moms do not allow their children, especially daughters, to have any boundaries. They don't allow their children to individuate, to be humans that exist outside of their sphere to have um, narcissistic parents don't allow children to function without needing that narcissistic parent. They need you to need them. Or they push you out and say, do it on your own without, you know what I mean? Like it can be the exact opposite. It's not healthy. It's imbalanced. And it's, um, it's all coming back to the way that particular narcissist ego needs the world to be. Hit the thumbs up, you guys. Hit subscribe. 
And if you need coaching or group coaching or peer support, there's lots of information in the main description of every video.